So attention, right? So God is speaking to the Israelites. He's brought them out of the wilderness. He's bringing them to this place where they're about ready to go into the, the promised land. And all throughout, we're, we'll get to it. He he's wants to, to give them instruction and encourage them. He's saying, listen, attention, this is important. Israel, God, our God, God, the one and only God. Love God with all. Love God, your God, with all your heart. Love him with all that's in you. Love him with all that you've got, with everything, right? So God loves you, so love him with all of that you have. Um, and I just think, man, until we understand, again, how much God loves us, it's, it's really hard for us to grasp this, but we are... Uh, Man, we're just so we're just so blessed that God would would pour out His love upon us, that He would choose us um, to be as part of His kingdom, to be a part of His church, part of His His body. Uh, one thing I guess I want to share is is um, if you look at marriage, right? So my wife Erica here, she's pretty awesome. Um, when you look at marriage, I think that helps us really understand our relationship with God, right? It's not about Loving God among many other things of our life, right? Like if you're coming to church or going to some study or maybe reading your Bible or doing something, you know, for God, along with other things like your career or your family, um, watching Netflix, you know, doing some hobby, whatever else. It's not about just adding God to your life. It's about allowing Him to have a relationship with you, about allowing Him to come into your heart. And so again, as we look at as something as beautiful as marriage, uh, Josh and Becca just got married yesterday. And so it's very, what a celebration. How fun was that, guys? Come on. They're just uh, an awesome couple, and, and we're just so thankful for them and, and what God has planned you know, for their lives. It's, it's going to be really fun to see. And I just got to see them as they were giving their vows and just how emotional they were getting. God, I've been there, and it's just so powerful as you're really laying yourself out there and giving these vows. Um, but another thing that just really stuck to me this morning as I was meditating, um, you know, coming here was just how, you know, it says in Genesis that, you know, the, the man would leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, that the two become one, that the two become one flesh. And that's echoed again in Ephesians when it's uh, talking again about how men, you know, should love their wives and wives respect their, their husbands and um, that, that same thing is said again. And they said also, Paul says it's a mystery. This is actually how the love is should be between uh, Christ and the church. And so really that's, again, what it's about, you know. So when you talk about loving God, it's not about loving these other things less. It's about allowing all of Him to come inside of you and, and loving Him in the same way that, that a husband loves his wife and vice versa. You become one, Okay. So it's about giving up your identity. It's about giving up your rights. You know, after we got married, I actually really struggled because I'm very independent. I like going off and, you know, having my own personal time and doing my own thing. After a long week, sometimes I would, you know, on a Saturday or whatever, I would wake up and I would escape to my man cave and just read and, and meditate and different things. And that would kind of hurt Erica's heart. You know, we would work through that and like, like, why does that bother you? You know, I didn't quite understand it. And, you know, the fact was, is it kind of made her jealous, you know, because it's like, this is our time to spend together. And, and so it's crazy. Like I get into this, this relationship. This isn't just marriage. This is any relationship. We can make one another jealous. The things we do can actually hurt our loved ones, right? Um, and so I've had to learn how to do that. I've had to learn how to communicate well, like, hey, I need some time right now. But um, the, the fact is, is what I do can actually affect her heart. And so I think sometimes we struggle knowing that the way we live our lives can actually hurt our Father's heart in heaven. That can actually hurt God's heart. I think sometimes we think, you know, He's this big God and He's untouchable. You know, He's got everything figured out. He's perfect. He doesn't need me, right? And so everything that I do for Him, it's just out. I just need to be obedient. I just need to listen to Him. I need to do what He tells me to do. He doesn't need me. But the reality is, is He's jealous for our love. And to the extent that we put our affection on our career, the extent that we put our affection on our hobbies, and we, we, we put God as just another thing that we do, it hurts his heart. Okay? So God, again, is he's uncreated. I don't know I mean, how best to say this and, and really what this burden is on my heart. 
He is the all-powerful, uncreated one. He is the one um, who's totally different from all of us. And He made us, He made His creation to love Him and to, to put His affection upon them. And so our, our, really our, our goal in life, our desire in life should be to be in this relationship with Him. And again, He made a way for us to do that through His Son Jesus as, as we cling to Him. And this isn't something that's like a burden. This isn't something that should be difficult. And maybe some of you all struggle, like maybe the enemy talking at you of, you know, you already do so much. You know, you already at least go to church. You already do this, that, and the other thing. And the reality is, is, is it's not a burden. Um, John Piper said this. He said, God is most glorified in us and we are most satisfied in him. It's this, uh, this term that I think he kind of popularized. It's called Christian hedonism, which hedonism is just a, a seeking after pleasure. It's seeking after good things. And ultimately, as believers, our goal is to have as much satisfaction, as much joy, as much um, uh, things on this side of eternity, but that it would, it would focus it on our God, right? So he is most glorified when we are satisfied in him. It's not about, um, you know, that, that we just have, you know, it's not about have tos. It's about the, we get to love God. We get to, to pour our, our affection upon him and to receive his love for us. So speaking of jealousy, I just want to skip back in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 4. We we're kind of reading through this and praying through this in our house of prayer meeting this morning. If any of you guys want to, you guys want to join a, um, a time of, of getting together and praying, every Sunday, 10 o'clock, we, we just come together. We're really trying to listen to what God has for us. Um, and it's just a fun time to just rest in his presence to pray for one another, um, to get filled up. So every Sunday, 10 o'clock, if you want to pray, we invite you to be a part of that. So 4.23 says, Take care, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and, and make a carved image, the form of anything that the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. So again, this is before the Israelites go into the promised land, before they, they receive the blessing, they're still at this place of, of being in the wilderness, right? Um, and that is just the reality, right? It actually kind of echoes a similar thing that Peter says. I think it's in uh, 1 Peter, um, where he says, Be sober-minded. Set your hope fully on the grace that will be revealed to you um, at, at his appearing. And so being sober-minded, realizing that we can be easily deceived, right, at the, pleasure of the, the pleasures of this world. 1 John 4 says, Do not love the world, the things of this world, all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, pride of possessions. They're not from the Father, they're from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. And so the message that we hear in Deuteronomy 4 here, Moses is warning um, the Israelites, and I think it's still applicable to us today, is do not get carried away with the blessings that God has given you. Do not allow something that God has given you to be a good thing, to be a carved image, to be an idol that now you're going to to, to seek affirmation, that you're going to, to to put your identity upon that, that if you, if you don't succeed, that all of a sudden now you don't have purpose, you don't have, um, a, yeah, a purpose. And it's like, don't put your identity on things. Don't allow any good thing to be an idol in your life. I like how it says, forget the, forget the covenant of the Lord your God. So again, this isn't just you bring God into your life among many other things. Actually, I think there's a diagram. Do you want to pull that up, um, Evan? This is just kind of what's rattling around in my head. So I don't know if you can see this or if this will make sense at all, but kind of what I've, I've already kind of echoed a little bit here. That's that, that's that first stage, right? And so what that's supposed to show there, that blue circle is like the universe, right? That's, that is your life, right? And you got all these other kind of planets that are hovering around you. Again, like your career, if you're into sports, maybe you enjoy watching football, family. Eric and I, we've been watching Glee, which is a, I don't necessarily recommend it, but it's a, a fun little thing that we've been watching on Netflix um, and then God, like, okay, cool. Like, let's bring God into this universe of ours, right? And we'll start loving him among other things, right? Um, and this is good, right? So 1 Peter 2, 3 talks about um, if you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, right? And so some of you all are, are here at this stage. You're very new and you, you see that God is a good thing in your life and you want to bring him in. And if that's what you're at, 
I bless you there, and I think that's awesome, and you should stay there. Um, but realize that the as you continue to grow and as you continue to mature, God is going to continue to knock on your heart and say, let me further in. Okay, I don't just want to be a part of your life. I want to have your life. Bonhoeffer actually said a, uh, an awesome thing. I don't think I wrote it down here. So Bonhoeffer was this guy in Germany during Nazism who uh, really came out during a very confusing time and ultimately was put to death, but I think he really helped people process during, during uh, that time how to respond to what was going on politically in that environment. And he wrote a book, um, Cost of Discipleship, I think, which I think is really based on Luke 15. Um, but he says, Christianity, what it means to be a Christian, I'm not quoting this verbatim, is where God calls a man to come and die. <laughs> really, so again, God doesn't want to be on the outside. He wants to be, ultimately, I'm going to just skip the second stage. I'll go right into consume. He wants to consume you. He wants the, the roles to be reversed. I'm sure many of you have heard that, you know, oh, Jesus, come and take the wheel, right? Come and take the wheel of, of, this, of my life. And I think that's the reality, right? We want him to be driving our life. And we can be just spectators seeing his goodness, seeing him flow through us, um, working in us. And that's where we're at. So Galatians 2.20, just a couple verses there. Um, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, right? But Christ who lives in me. And so now, I, I, you know, it's by faith that I live. Um, it goes on. 1 Corinthians 10.31, I think, is an, another awesome one. I think that is... Uh, do everything for the glory, do everything for, for God's glory. And so it's no longer about allowing God to be just part of your life, like loving God and allowing him just to be part of it. But you want him in the center and everything that you do is for his glory. Everything that you do, you bring him along with you, right? And I think this is a challenge that we all struggle with. We segment our lives, right? It's like we, we go to work and we put on our, our work hat and we just do work, you know? And God's like, bring me along with you. You know, like when, when you're in conversations with your coworkers, pray and ask that, that I would work through you and that I would speak through you, that it would not be you that's working, but it would be actually me inside of you, right? Um, same with even just hanging out with your family, watching football, whatever it is. It's not about doing other things less. It's about allowing God to work in you in every circumstance of your life allowing him to be, to be in you. So our God is a jealous God. He won't share his love with any other. And it's my prayer that we would receive that. God, I'm just going to pray that now. Lord, allow us to receive your love, Lord, and I pray that you would just give us um, an understanding that you want all of us. That it's not about just uh, you being part of our life, but that you would consume us. Now I'm going to quickly break down the different things, right? So love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. Mark is actually, I think, the, the gospel. It hits all those four specifically. And I would not do this passage justice if I didn't at least spend a, a little bit of time talking through the different parts. Uh, but we'll go pretty quick here. So what does it mean to love God with your heart, right? And I think the key there is just it's emotions, right? I, I was actually talking with uh, my brother Derek, who's sitting on the uh, over here. Um, and we were just talking just about, I think we in the Western society, we really praise the God of our mind. Um, and I think everything we, we do, we, we kind of have to logic our way through it. But God, he made every part of us, right? So that includes our emotions. And it's not like our mind is any better than our emotions. Um, our emotions are very powerful. Our emotions are very strong. And so um, we should love God with the overflow of, of thankfulness. When we come here, this is, you know, we come here on a Sunday morning, we get to worship him um, with the emotions of thankfulness of what he has done in our life, right? And even if we're not feeling it, say we're bored, say we're tired, say, you know, I'm depressed. Do you take that before God? I say, God, I'm bored right now. I want to I know you more, but honestly, my heart is dull and I am bored. But, you know, I want to give you that emotion. I want to give you all of me. And it's crazy that, that the many times that I just, I lay my emotions, even the bad stuff down before him as an attempt to love him with everything. And he turns that around and he shows that he is good. And he, he reverses 
um, the, the, my circumstances, right, so that I'm filled up with joy, I'm filled up with love. Loving God with all your mind. Um, man, our minds are very powerful. Scientists say that we only use a fraction of our minds. I think it's going to be amazing when we get our glorified bodies, how brilliant our minds are going to be. I'm actually really excited for that, um, especially for me because my memory is like very, I just, I wish I could remember things um, more. Um, but anyway, so loving God with our minds. So when we study, when we, we, we um, yeah, study and meditate and, and whatever it is, and, and even like, you know, bad things, right? Like Jesus talks about how, um, what, like essentially what do you do with your mind, right? So it's not about, because um, he, he actually, in the Sermon on the Mount, he made um, hating, right? And, and like murder, like that's what it says in the Bible is like a bad thing, but he made it even harder. He said, um, don't even get angry with your brother, right? Don't even, um, don't even lust in your heart because then you've already committed adultery, and so what, did, what do we spend our, our thoughts on, right? Are, are we allowing our thoughts to get carried into the gutter? Or are we allowing our thoughts to, to dwell on good things, um, to lift us up and to glorify him? All of our soul, right? So the soul, I believe, is it's the eternal part of us. If you ask um, anyone, right, like what does it mean to love God with your soul, every person will have a different answer. Um, Dave Watson, for those of you who are watching those videos, that's kind of what he was saying. I agree with that because I've talked to the few people um, Sam, which I don't see here today, he was telling me um, to love with your soul is all of your passions. And I think that's very true. Um, you know, like what is the, the thing that gets you excited? What gets you up in the morning? Love God with that, right? Um, but I, I think too, it's just that eternal part of you because when God breathed life into Adam and Eve, he breathed into their nostrils and they became living beings, right? And we know that we were made to live for all eternity. So love God with all of, all of your soul. Lastly, with all of your strength, and I think this is the key part. Um, like I said, I really like the message translation out of Deuteronomy. Um, love God with all that you've got, right? Love God with all of your strength. And I think that is, in my mind, it's the most important, right? So um, Robert said this last week, sometimes we have to um, not feel our way into an action, but act our way into a feeling, right? Right? And I'm sure we've all experienced this before. We don't necessarily want to, to come to church. We don't want to go to a study. We don't even want to go to work and give it our best and give it our all at work. But if we act our way into a feeling or if we start acting, we just, we just show up and we start you know, giving it our all, it's crazy how our emotions, how the feelings will come and will empower us to continue to do that. And so I encourage you, this is the one I think that's, that stands out to most to me, is to love God with all that you have, all of your strength. When, when you're tired, lay it all out there and love God, right? And get up and, and, and pace. And um, I say pace, and I probably got to put some context to that. So when I'm, I maybe mentioned this before, in the morning time when I get tired and I'm trying to like spend time with God and I get, I just want to like lay down and I do that plenty of times and I just fall back asleep. But if I get up, I put on some music and I start pacing, I just move, you know? I actually even say that when you're on the phone, an important conversation, don't do it sitting down, stand up, you know, be, be in a place of action, right? And I, I found that when I do that, that I'm so much more prepared to, to receive from God and to, and to um, be full of energy, be full of life. Jesus even said, the spirit is willing, the flesh is, we is, flesh is weak, right? His disciples um, in the garden, they were praying and praying with Jesus. Um, he's saying, stay awake and pray with me, right? And so that, I think, is the reality of all of us to, to differing, differing degrees, right? We want to do, we want to follow God. We want to love him with all that we have, but we are also very weak. And so um, sometimes we need to tap into our strength. And I thank God that I can do all things right through, through Christ who uh, strengthens me. So is that good? Is that encouraging? God, I just, uh, again, thank you for loving us. I thank you, Lord, that um, you've made a covenant with humanity, Lord. You made a covenant really with your chosen people, the Israelites, through, uh, through Abraham, Lord. And you spoke that you would, through this man, that you would raise up uh, many nations um, that would be greater than the stars in, in the sky. 
and then through through David that you said that you would raise up a king like him who would sit on his throne and it would rule forever, rule and reign on this earth. And we know, Jesus, that, that you are just that king. And we know when we say Maranatha, Lord, come, it means that you have came, that you have risen from the grave, and that you will come again to be the rightful king, that, to make all wrong things right. And Lord, I just thank you that you put us, this humble congregation, to be able to be grafted into that, to be able to be a part of the promises that you have, you've laid out for your chosen people, and you've chosen us all the same, God. Lord, I pray that you would um, help us understand your love for um, how much you love us, God. And I pray that you would help us each individually, whatever I said today, Holy Spirit, whatever you spoke through me, um, a way that we can to take a step towards loving you more because you are so worthy of it. Amen. All right, so at this point, uh, first of all, if this is your first time, I encourage you to come back next week. Robert's going to continue this series, um, and that is how do we love God? I mentioned, you know, kind of how you love God, which is loving him with all of you, but he's going to talk about loving obedience. So God's love language to us is one of mercy and of, of grace. How we love him is, is actually how we obey. So when we, we listen and we hear from him, we respond and we are obedient to him. That's how we love him. And so Robert's going to cover that next week. So at this point, we uh, will have an opportunity to uh, be able to kind of process together what God spoke to us. It's kind of a new form, and I really love it because it's not just about, as Erica said, about me or anyone else, but it's about all of us learning and growing and dis discerning together. So as we get together in these different groups, so um, I think Joe and Kim, if you guys want to hang back there again, that would be awesome. Erica, maybe you want to hang over here again. Um, Evan, it looks like you're in the back, so maybe do you guys want to hang out in this back corner? And then uh, Joe and Nicola, y'all are awesome. You want to maybe come up in this corner here? That would be great. Um, so go ahead and start forming those groups. Um, so yeah, just whatever God said to you, um, it just is an opportunity to process that, to talk with one another, to encourage one another, Keep it brief, um, but also, yeah, just encourage one another. I love you guys. So thankful to see you, uh, your many wonderful faces and hope you have a great rest of your week.